Hello, fighters, survivors, and thrivers. Uh, welcome to Super Fun Friday Nights. Forget about it Fridays. That's right. We're going to forget about it. We're going to forget about our worries, our anxiety, our frustration, our sadness, our anger. We're going to forget about infections, tumors, <laughs> diagnosis, treatment, all of it. We're going to forget about it and we're going to laugh. All right, we're gonna have some fun. Just forget about it, okay? Just see yourself as you want, as you see yourself in perfect health, living a life that you love, having fun, no pain, no doctor's offices, no hospitals, no operations. George, stop eating the chair. George is eating the chair. George the puppy is eating the chair. All right, so, um, I guess what? I know, I know, this is like so shocking. But I am on rd.com, readersdigest.com. I swear this site is gonna be like, it's gonna be my fuel for maybe a full year. There's just so many good things. There's a lot of things on here that I can't show you because um, I don't know how you could do that in a live. Maybe you can, but I don't know how. If you know how, please let me know. But there's pictures that you could like, you watch with memes and stuff that you can go through. They're like awesome, super funny. But I found something I hope that you will think is funny. Okay, this is for the married people out there or the people that are about to get married or the people that were married. Okay, so there's something for someone <laughs> in this whole um, set of very funny quotes. So funny, 40 funny marriage quotes that might actually be true. Um, okay, I don't know if we're going to have to go through all 40, but we're going to go through probably half of them. Okay, here we go. Let me turn down our DJ. DJ, DJ, turn down the music. Okay, we're down. And we're ready to roll. Okay. The first quote is, getting married is like trading the adoration of many for the sarcasm of one. Mae West. <laughs> The adoration of many for the sarcasm of one. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Man, West, is that a gun in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? Okay, maybe I need to push on up on that, but for those of you who remember that, um, you got it. You got it. Uh, okay, to keep your marriage brimming with love in the wedding cup, whenever you're wrong, admit it. Whenever you're right, shut up. Okay, Ogden Nash. <laughs> I'm probably not really good at that one. Um, let's see. When you're wrong, admit it. Okay, I can do that. But when I'm right, mm, I think I like to. <laughs> I think I like to share the fact that I'm right. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. Maybe sometimes I just say it in my head. It depends. It depends what level we're on. We're like how big of uh, you know of a situation, of a topic, uh, it is, but, um, yeah, we can all work on something, right? So before I got married, I had six theories about raising children. Now I have six children and no theories. John Wilmot. <laughs> well, we all, hi, welcome. We all have this idea of what it's like to raise children. And we all have this idea of how we're going to be as parentals as we raise children. I think for me, the most shocking um, parts of being a mom and um, raising children is, you know, when they have, you know, a completely different perception of something than you have. And um, you're like, but why, why don't like they, they should, in quotes, think like I do, which is not true at all. They, of course they have, you know, they have their own opinions, but like with, you know, this, uh, our, our economy and our, um, the state of mother earth and homelessness. And it's just, it's just, um, magnified. And so 
I hear things like, oh, your generation did this. <laughs> I'm like, we could have said that to the people in our generation with the Cold War and, oh geez, I don't know, all the things that were going on back then that we didn't like either, but I think that's just a progression. And I just say, you know, always choose the positive. Always think about all the wonderful things that we have and we can, you know, we can make a difference and we can turn things around. We can, we can and we will. We can and we will. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm married for love, but the obvious side, but the, I'm married for love, but the obvious side benefit of having someone around to find my glasses cannot be ignored. <laughs> Cameron Esposito. Oh yes. Especially now. What are my four words I say on the daily? maybe even like every hour where are my glasses and i have tons of glasses so i get i go like to like the dollar king or whatever and i buy 10 pairs of glasses and then i put them in different places and then in a couple of months i can't find any of them <laughs> they've disappeared into like gl glasses heaven or something i don't know i don't know where they are so yes i do like sometimes i'll like end up bringing them ending up all in the car and they're none up here or they're all up here and none in the car now I do have two on the console so those stay there but my favorite ones those are the ones I don't really like but my favorite ones like these ones these are like a pair of my favorite I probably wear these almost all the time I have the ones with those like fake little diamonds but those like reflect so um, anyways uh, yeah <laughs> where are my glasses and the other one is where's my phone where are my glasses where's my phone where are my glasses where's my phone my keys I've got it under control okay because um, I have a little hook on the fridge it's magnetic and so I put the keys there and I'm very good about that but you know if you don't have an emotion involved in what you're doing then it's very 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 easy to forget so if I put down my phone somewhere and I'm always I'm walking I'm always like my phone's here my phone's there like who knows where it is and if I don't have any emotion or I'm thinking about something else or I'm trying to get it out of the house many many times I'm like I have no idea no idea there's no emotion involved with that um, but if like you like tripped and you were holding your phone, then you would know where your phone is. <laughs> There's emotion with that. There's physical pain. <laughs> That's not really a good example, but you know what I mean? Like there has to be, like you actually have to be conscious. I am putting my phone down here so it won't get wet when I'm doing the dishes. Okay. Then I know where my phone is because I've consciously thought, oh, but if I'm just like, oh, I'm like just putting it down as I go to open the door to like, you know have somebody come in and then I, I don't even know where my glasses are so yeah it'd be, it's helpful to have people around and husbands wives in this uh, situation to help you find your glasses uh huh um hang on hang on uh please hang on okay there we go okay back on track the definition of eternity is two people and a ham dorothy parker um, I guess she loves ham. I don't know. I don't understand that one. Do you? If you understand this one, please share below in the comments. The definition of eternity is two people and a ham. Oh, maybe like a ham. Oh, maybe they mean like somebody who's funny. Like somebody, you know, oh, you're such a ham. What do you think? Is this like a physical ham, like a ham that you would eat? Or is it like somebody who's funny? The defi definition of eternity is two people and a ham. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Please share, please share. Marriage is a wonderful institution, but who wants to live in an institution? Groucho Marx. <laughs> Well, we're many of us are living in the institutions in our minds. We got to get out of those institutions 100%. Uh, sometimes I wonder if men and women really suit each other. Perhaps they should just live next door and visit now and then. Katherine Hepburn. Hmm. Well, you know that um, studies have shown, I don't have anything to like support that statement, but I have read it. I don't even know the percentage, but when couples like travel, not too much, but just enough, it is good for their marriage because then you're looking forward to um, having somebody come back or maybe you've got something that you really want to get done and then you can really focus on that. Um, that's what I've heard, like couples that just travel enough, not too much because then you get too far apart, but it's like, you know, fun when they're coming back or, you know, you're planning something, something special. So, um, 
I don't know about living next door, um, but maybe uh, a walkway, like a like a skywalk. <laughs> One house, two house, and a skywalk. I don't know. Some days. Some days. Okay. An archaeologist is the best husband a woman can have. The older she gets, the more interested he is in her. Agatha Christie. Oh, we could change this around, too. An archaeologist is the best wife a man can have. The older he gets, the more interested she is in him. All right. We can just... Change that around, Mr. Christie. You can tell what era that's from. It works both ways, okay? And I do not believe that men age better than women. I think it's just a different kind of aging. And I think that um, every age has something to welcome, to embrace, to enjoy. And uh, the way you look, the way that you... Um, that you develop in your maturity and your lines and your um, crevices and your um, your wounds and uh, your scars, all of those things come with that. Now, I'm not telling you that I don't do some things to like rejuvenate <laughs> my face. I work out because I do want to maintain, um, you know, muscles and cardio and I you know it, when you look good you feel you feel good but if if you're older and you're trying to look younger and you go overboard that doesn't look good and if you don't like really care about what you look like well that's a whole different thing but you know I think beauty is in you know in every single age you know every single age so we have to embrace that as a society and um, celebrate every age and every way and every way you look. Like when I see myself when I was super, super young, like I had, just had little baby cheeks and like, not like a baby, but even like a teen, like it was still like a little, you know, it's like different. Every, every decade is different. Okay. But, and I love all of them. I really do. I love all of them. By all means, marry. If you get a good wife, you'll become happy. If you get a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. Socrates, again, we can change that by all means marry. If you get a good husband, you'll become happy. If you get a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. Yes, we are philosophers. Believe it or not, Socrates, we're actually very good philosophers. I can philosophize all day long. Okay, that was a joke, philosophize, philosophical. You could do a lot, actually, with that word. But we could. We could. We could. We are philosophers. Philosophers. What a silly word for such a, like, sophisticated um, uh, verb. Yeah. Philosopher. He philosophizes. <laughs> it's not a word. That's a <laughs> noun. Philosopher noun. <laughs> Oh, Friday night. Forget about it. Clearly. Okay. Now, one of the keys to a successful marriage is separate bathrooms. When he enters my bathroom, sometimes I'm like, why are you in here? And he's like, I live here. Can I enjoy my bathroom too? Michelle Obama. Yes, gentlemen. Okay. This is true. Don't come in my bathroom while I'm getting ready. Because you see, it's not, it's not a simple thing. For us as it is for you and you know when you're getting ready you just need a couple things like deodorant maybe shaving cream and maybe you have an electric shaver I don't know but maybe a little cologne but it for us we've got like our makeup we've got our lotion we've got our hair uh, curling art like it's a lot of stuff so there's not a lot of room unless you have a super big bathroom and also we have a process. Most of, most of us have a process, okay? And we don't like that process to be broken, especially if we're like having a sip of wine as we're going out or, you know, listening to music and we got our jam on and then like there's, a, there's an atmosphere when we're getting ready. So I'm sure the Obama had, Obama's had pretty big bathrooms in the White House, but apparently Michelle was like, hey, get out of my bathroom. <laughs> and I also, believe they probably had more than one bathroom and his and her bathroom but I yeah I I like having my own bathroom for sure and my bathroom's got all my stuff in it well now Sophia too and I we like that okay keep your eyes wide open before marriage half half shut afterwards <laughs> 
Benjamin Franklin. This is awesome. Keep your eyes wide open before marriage, half shut afterwards. Word, amen to that. Amen to that. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. Just take a nap, it says. Um, all right. Before you marry a person, you should first make them use a computer with slow internet to see who they really are. Before you marry a person, you should first make them... You should... Ugh. You should first make them use a computer with slow internet to see who they really are. Will Ferrell. That is hilarious. Okay, so um, Will Ferrell, by the way, um, is so funny. He, I believe he went to USC and he did a commencement speech that is like, epic epic i gotta do commencement commencement speeches for for you um because uh i i've i've listened to many of them and wills is one of my favorites it's very very funny um not surprisingly of course but uh yeah you can you see how people act um under certain situations so big thing for me like if if um, how people treated other like people that were serving or how they tipped or um, you know how they were considerate like those things were really really important to me so yeah if you're 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 watching somebody have a meltdown because their computer is slow can you imagine if there's something big going on oh yeah oh yeah and it's the same, like, never marry somebody before you have to go on a trip with them. And then, that, I mean, you have to go because things will happen and you learn about a lot about somebody when you go on a trip with them. That's my advice. Um, okay. Marriage is the bond between a person who never remembers anniversaries and another who never forgets them. <laughs> That's Ogden Nash. <laughs> The bond between a person who never remembers anniversaries and another who never forgets them. I never forget because I like to celebrate. I like to go to dinners. Uh, I like treats. Uh, I like to always have a reason to celebrate. So if there's something to celebrate, let's do it. Like what do we coming? What do we have coming up? Passover, Easter, next week. Something to celebrate. Something to look forward to. And. Um, you always have to look something to, to, you should always have something to look forward to. Um, marriage is not just spiritual communion. It is also remembering to take out the trash. Mm, word, word. There you go. That's solid. Joyce Brothers. Marriage is not just spiritual communion. It is also remembering to take out the trash. And sometimes when somebody takes out the trash, that is a, a spiritual feeling that you don't have to do it. Uh, definitely a celebratory feeling. So my son is, he has chores, chores. He has to unload the dishwasher, take out the trash, and the, do the laundry, folding of the laundry. He's actually pretty good, and so is my daughter. And my daughter, um, she helps with, um, like, she'll clean up and organize. She's also very good with uh, folding clothes. And... Um, I get her to do, to clean the, the kitchen, but she says that's sexist. And I'm like, it's not sexist, it's that you're a little bit older. Uh, but I don't know, probably somewhere in, um, like, I, I don't know. I think that's just, I don't know, it's just kind of like in our DNA that we clean the kitchen. I actually like, I don't mind, I don't like, I don't like clean up after cooking, but I don't mind washing the dishes because I feel like that's kind of like meditation. But all the rest of it, ugh, forget it. Um, and folding laundry is also meditation to me. But um, yeah, they 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 help out. I mean, I do the majority of the stuff, but I think it's important. I don't want to overload them, but it's you know, it's good for children to also do it and feel a sense of accomplishment and contribute contributing to the family and um, you know, just feeling good about that. So. Um, responsibility it's important um, never get married in college it's hard to get a start if a pros prospective employer finds you've already w made one mistake <laughs> Albert Hubbard never get married in college it's hard 
to get a start if a prospective employer finds you've already made one mistake. I love the idea of these um, high school sweethearts. And if you are a high school sweetheart, please, please share um, how you met and um, how how many years you've been married. I know some people who are high school sweethearts and are still married, and I just think that's awesome. I would have loved, loved to have a relationship that strong and that lasting and that kind of soulmate bond. I mean, it's rare, but it happens, and I think it's beautiful. Or college, you know, they meet in college, and they're still together. I mean, that person becomes your family. Their family becomes your family, hopefully. And... Um, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, impressive when people have been married that long because marriage is not always easy. Um, there's going to be ups and downs like everything else, but you know, people that stick in it and they keep going and they push forward. Like I, um, I admire them. Absolutely. That's, I think it's beautiful. The most important four words for a successful marriage is, I'll do the dishes, anonymous. <laughs> I'll do the dishes and dry them too. Yeah, that's the, there was like a little tag there. I love being married. It's so great to find that one special person, person you want to annoy for the rest of your life. Rita Rudner. <laughs> I love being married. It's so great to find that one special person you want to annoy for the rest of your life. Rita Rudner. Okay, there's an also, another saying is another comedian said something like, I think Rita's a, a comedian, but uh, it's basically like, yeah, marriage. You find the person that annoys you the most and then you marry them and you're stuck with them for the rest of your life. Uh, that's funny. That's why you need to do a little traveling. You got to have your own ladies' nights and he has to have his guys' nights and, you know, Give the other person the bathroom, the space, help them out a little bit, and vice versa. And I think that's how it works best. Um, the best thing to ever happen to marriage is the pause live TV button. Rick Riley. The best thing to ever happen to marriage is the pause live TV button. The pause live TV button. Pause live TV button. Huh. The best thing ever happened. I don't understand that one. Who knows? Who gets this one? The best thing. Anybody? The best thing to ever happen to marriage. Oh, because you can pause it. You can pause TV and then. Oh, okay. This could go in a lot of different directions. <laughs> Maybe it's just to get a snack. I don't know. Any thoughts? Please share. Mm -hmm. Rewind that, please. Oh, rewind that. Oh, I see. Okay. That, okay, that could be it too, to remind it, to rewind it. Um, marriage is an attempt to solve problems together, which you didn't even have when you were on your own. Eddie Cantor. Marriage is an attempt to solve problems together, which you didn't even have when you were on your own. <laughs> this is my side of the bed. Oh, I love it. Okay. This is the last one, and we'll do the rest next week. Husband secretly lowers the thermostat, and I secretly turn it back up. We both vehemently denied touching it. Marriage is fun. Stephanie Ortiz. So, Ortiz, I guess it's Ortiz. Um, yeah, I run cold. He runs hot. So, it's a constant battle. But we know, because I have to push it up, and then he has to push it down. I have to, and then I'm like... Stop touching it. I'm freezing. Put some clothes on. And I have clothes on. And I'm still cold. Well, you can take yours off. Okay. So, like, it's this constant battle. I run cold. My fingertips are cold. My toes are cold. My hands are cold. My feet, my feet are sometimes so cold they cramp up. Okay. I get cramps. And I feel like this is in my family. Almost all of my, my first cousins, we all have cold hands and cold feet. And we love to turn the um, thermostat up, 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 up to keep it nice and hot. Uh, so men usually run hot and um, often women run cold. My friend, though, mm -hmm, no, not going to name any names. Simona keeps her house so cold. Like I have to like prepare myself if it's not summer. <laughs> to bring like you know some warm boots a parka you know a fluffy hat some mittens okay i'm joking but it is cold there 
But I tell her, I straight up, I'm like, it's cold in here. She's like, can you get too hot? Here's a blanket. Okay, thanks. All right. All right, my married people. We'll finish these up next week. I hope you laughed. I hope you had fun. I'll post the link um, for you on um, below the, the video. And, um, yeah, if you have any jokes about being married, please add them. Married, please add them. Please add them below. All right. I will see you tomorrow for Superhero Saturday. Thank you so much for joining me. I really um, appreciate your support. And um, just know that I'm always thinking about you. I'm here for you. Please message me if you have any questions or if you just want to talk. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a survivor myself. I've also lost my beloved sister to cancer. So it's, um, it's unfortunately no stranger to me. But I love to give back, to serve, and um, to really help you get through your treatment as best as possible. Okay? As easy as possible. As um, successful as possible. Alright, so, daily mantra. I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm whole. I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm whole. One more time, please. I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm whole. The thriving starts now.